Wonderful that we can gather together and worship God. Amen. So our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 19. And as I read this, I want you to imagine just how perfect the love of God is in telling us in his scripture who he is and what he has done for us and how he changes us to be like him. Psalm 19. <clears throat> the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we come into your presence now to worship you. We thank you for the great work of salvation you've done in the Lord Jesus. So we offer to you our praise and our worship this morning. For you alone are worthy. We ask that you would be pleased. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's stand and sing together. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, 
in God. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. You may be seated. Sally Clayton, um, and I'll be reading today's announcements. So first up, um, we have a men's breakfast next Saturday, September 30th at 8.30 a.m. All men are welcome to join the breakfast and let Don Paul know if, if you want to come to make sure there's enough food. Um, on that same day, Saturday, September 30th, there's a women's conference happening from 8 a.m. to 3.45 p.m. FBC is partnering with Ashland Christian Fellowship in the story for a special one-day women's conference called Going Beyond. Um, it's a digital simulcast conference hosted by Priscilla Shirer, and women will be gathering all over the country in various locations to grow together in their understanding of the gospel. The event will be held at Ashland Christian Fellowship. The doors open at 8 a.m. and the conference starts at 9 Cost is $10, um, so feel free to spread the word and invite a friend. There are flyers in the foyer with more information about it, too. Um, next, men's Bible study is kicking off Tuesday, October 3rd at 8.30 a.m. here in the Fellowship Hall. They will be studying the Book of Acts and will be led by Ed Holtz and Lee Fox, and all men are welcome to join. Next, on October 7th, Saturday from 8 to 11, is the Churchyard Cleanup Day. Um, the bulletin list items you can bring for yard work, and we do need a few more wheelbarrow, wheelbarrows um, specifically, so if you have those, please bring them. Coffee, tea, pastries, and water will be provided. Next, Women's Bible Study is kicking off Thursday, October 12th at 9.30 um, in the library. The study will be a video presentation, also from Priscilla Shirer, called Discerning the Voice of God, and will be led by Susan Fox and Deb Merriman. Um, other stuff, uh, we're still looking for a part-time bookkeeper. The job announcement is posted on the foyer bulletin board and on our website, and the closing date is now September 30th. So if you're interested or have questions, contact Lee Toonberg, and his phone number is in the bulletin. Next, we will be moving back to the sanctuary um, next Sunday, October 1st. So we'll be back in there. And lastly, there will be prayer time today after service. So please join us in prayer for our church if you can. Thank you. Sally. So one of the things we enjoy as believers is assurance of our salvation. So let's stand and sing blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. One of the Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song. This is my 
Carly, and I'm going to read today's catechism, which is from week number seven. Uh, the catechism question, or actually the passage of scripture is Matthew 22, 37 through 40. And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and prophets. So today's question is, what does the law of God require? And if you'll read the answer with me together, um, perfect, per sorry, per personal perfect and perpetual obedience that we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves. What God forbids should never be done, and what God commands should always be done. It was a tongue twister. Uh, pray with me. Great lawgiver, you have spoken a perfect law, and you deserve perfect obedience. Let us not merely think that your law requires outward submission. It demands the full assent of our minds and our hearts. Who is equal to such a task? We confess that we fall short of keeping your law. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Carly. Thanks for your patience. We're playing musical mics today. <clears throat> Let's stand and continue singing. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me save that thou art. Oh, oh, oh. 
seated. All right. Well, good morning at BC. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. It's going to look a little different up here this morning because um, we're uh, having some Wi-Fi issues. So normally I would use my iPad and now I can't even figure out how to open up my laptop correctly. So yeah, let's, let's go there. Let's do that. So welcome. If you're new with us this morning, my name is Adam and I'm the teaching pastor here. Today we're going to be going through Matthew chapter 17 verses 1 through 27. And I know, it seems like the last few weeks, we're getting through a whole chapter at a time. And that's what we're doing today. So I'm sorry if you end up spending the night here. But we'll get through the chapter. Okay. And by the way, if uh, the Lord has put it on your heart, our uh, offering plate is in the back. And if the Lord's put it on your heart, you're more than welcome to give this one. So I'm going to read the scripture. And then we're going to pray. And then we're going to jump into the message. So, chapter 17, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them high up uh, a mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with them. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good we are here, if you wish. I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their face, and they were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. And the disciples asked them, Then why do the scribes say that first Elijah must come? And he answered them, Elijah does come, and he will restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come. And they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they pleased. So also the Son of Man will certainly suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist. And when they came to the crowd, a man came up to him and kneeling before him said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he has seizures and he suffers terribly. For often he falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples and they could not heal him. And Jesus answered, O faithless and twisted generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the boy was healed instantly. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? He said to them, Because of your little faith. For truly I say to you, if you have faith like the grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. As they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and he will be raised 